A witch and a knight join forces to stop the evil Dr. Faust in this cooperative hack and slash game without the, well, cooperation. Instead of a friend joining in on the action, it's just you and the computer. With two characters taking the place of one, does Knight's contract double your pleasure, or is it simply twice the hassle? Sadly, I myself can go no further. <laughs> of course not. You're not back from the dead for nothing. Too many witches do indeed spoil the brew, especially if they're hell-bent on revenge. And that's the premise behind Knight's Contract story, which draws its inspiration from the hysteria behind the real-life Salem witch trials. Sin of selling her soul to the, devil. the ones carrying good-natured witches whose code was to protect humanity were wrongly accused of causing a plague by Dr. Faust, who used demagoguery to whip the townsfolk into a witch-hating frenzy. By Faust's command, the witches were executed by a brood of a man named Henrik, the character you control. God would never forgive me if I beheaded an innocent person. As he was about to execute a witch named Gretchen, a curse was placed on Henrik. He must now live his life as an immortal, which honestly doesn't seem like such a bad deal as far as curses go. The witches eventually all return from the dead, and they're not exactly happy. They're also a whole lot of ugly, taking on forms more monster than human. Bind his soul to mine until death separates us. Henrik eventually encounters the witch behind his curse and they form a pact. She will grant him the mortality he craves in return for his help in stopping the rest of the witches from destroying the world. It won't be an easy journey. The story is told exclusively through frequent cutscenes, most of which unfortunately involve boring banter between Heinrich and Gretchen throughout their travels. For now, let us hurry on. The time will come to settle the score with Faust. <laughs> Knight's Contract is divided into 20 episodes, each lasting anywhere from 5 to 40 minutes, depending on how well you adapt to the confusing environments or how frequently you luck out in the boss encounters. There are three initial difficulty settings, with two more waiting to unlock, and a ranking system that grades you in areas like combos, time, and enemies killed. You automatically collect souls from defeated enemies, which you use like currency to upgrade spells. Killing enemies also earns you witch points that let you activate a goofy special attack that depicts a gigantic nude Gretchen. There's also handfuls of hidden items to collect in each episode, most of which are represented by a glimmering light, ranging from pieces of artwork to wearable objects that improve things like spell recharge time, damage, and more. The game is repetitive overall, with no real side quests to undertake, and the levels offer little in the way of interaction. The environments are overly restrictive, yet surprisingly confusing to navigate, since it's not always clear where you can and cannot go. You'll frequently backtrack across the same paths before stumbling over one route you haven't yet taken. Occasionally, you'll have a timed objective to rescue a person in need, but for the most part, it's hack and slash against weak enemies, view a cutscene, hack and slash against bigger enemies, view another cutscene, and then boss time. It gets old quick. <laughs> Knight's Contract has you playing, for the most part, as the massive Henrik, who wields an equally massive scythe to slice and dice enemies. He can't jump and moves like a lumbering ox, but his scythe is quick and extremely effective at battering enemies. Yet, having only two basic attacks means combat with the scythe is little more than a straight button mash. To add more diversity to the combat, you have Gretchen's magic. Her main spells include a spear that juts up from the ground, a twisting group of metallic vines, a type of bear trap, and a hammer that whacks enemies from above. Later, you'll unlock weapon-oriented spells that serve to power up Henrik. By far, the most frustrating elements of Knight's Contract revolve around Gretchen's aggravatingly self-destructive instincts. Since Heinrich cannot technically die, it's Gretchen's life bar that you have to mind. The problem stems from Gretchen's uncanny habit of standing motionless as she's pummeled by enemies. You have to constantly keep an eye on her as a result, which isn't always easy thanks to the wonky camera and often cramped environments. She's so useless that it's unclear why she's even tagging along in the first place. Combat would certainly be more boring than it already is, but it's a trade-off you'll begin to consider worthwhile as the game goes on. You're late, Heinrich. Could you lend me a hand? She's an even bigger liability during boss fights, as the developers sadistically included pools of fire, freezing breath, tiny platforms that mean instant death if you fall off the edge, and other hazards that seem like a magnet for the motionless mannequin. You can't order her to stay back, the only control you have is to call her into your arms. 
This Embrace, which looks sweet at first, has the benefit of healing Gretchen and making you recover from attacks faster. The catch is that while you're holding her, you can't fight. Apparently, neither character seems to realize that it might be better for everyone if she takes a piggyback ride instead of jumping into Henrik's outstretched arms. So the only way to effectively fight the bosses is to hold her and dodge the attack sequences, dump her off so you can strike a couple of times, then quickly call her back. Yet even this strategy relies more on luck as you hope Gretchen doesn't get flambéed, snatched, or flung while you whittle away at a boss's health bar. Once the boss is sufficiently wounded, you'll have to execute a quick time event as in God of War. Fail the quick time event, and make no mistake, you will fail quick time events due to their ridiculously tight timing, and the boss will replenish its health, forcing you to gnash your teeth through much of the encounter all over again. The settings in Knight's Contract are diverse in appearance, populated with interesting-looking enemies inspired by classic mythology and fantasy literature. The orchestral soundtrack heightens the action, but the voice acting and dialogue aren't particularly memorable. The voice of Gretchen, in particular, sounds like she's bored half the time. My apprentice was not only skilled, but had aesthetic sense as well. While the game features some nice texture work and sharp visuals, there's noticeable screen tearing, and the camera angles aren't at all helpful when trying to figure out where to go. The cutscenes interrupt the flow of the game with almost comical frequency, each prefaced by a black loading screen that snatches you out of the action. Why the developers didn't let the dialogue occur during gameplay is a mystery. Your bite is as strong as your bark. Enough! Knight's Contract is far too rough around the edges to be worth its asking price. The needlessly frequent cutscenes interrupt the game's flow, combat against the majority of enemies requires little thought, and you'll be constantly fighting either the camera or the level design. The finishing blow is Gretchen's AI, which makes the boss fights annoying instead of exciting. Before playing the game, it was puzzling why Henrik would be so adamant about regaining his mortality. After playing, it's clear. He simply wants the pain and suffering to end. A few hours into Knight's Contract, and you'll feel the same. You may kill me as you see fit.